Hey guys, welcome to part two of building a simple app using jQuery and MongoLab. So in the last video, we went ahead and created our MongoDB database with MongoLab, and we added a form where we could add book titles, and they get saved in the database, and then we also have the ability to loop through them and display the books down here. So what I want to do in this video is I want to show you how we can actually update these. All right, but before we do that, we need to actually have some kind of button or link that we can click to um, to specify which one we want to update. So if we go to get books, that's where we're generating the JavaScript for each book. So what we'll do is let's put an edit button or edit link. Let's go right here. Actually, let's go like that, and we'll say output. Okay, and I don't really care how it looks. It's not about how, what it looks like, so we're just going to have a, just a link. All right, so this will say edit. Okay. So... When we click this edit button, we want to fire off a function, all right, that we're going to create. But we need some way to pass along the data for whichever book we're updating, all right? And there's a few different ways we could do it. What I'm going to do is use the HTML5 data attribute, all right, where we can actually pass stuff uh, through attributes. All right, so for instance, let's say data dash. Okay, so each one of these is going to have a data and then dash and then whatever we want to specify. Uh, for this, let's do title. So we'll say uh, data title equals, and then we're going to want to concatenate in here with single quotes and then plus signs. And we'll say data dot title. All right. We're going to do the same thing with the category and the excerpt. So I'm going to copy that, paste that twice. Okay, uh, let's go to this one here and change it to category. And then this we're going to send along the category and the excerpt. And you know what, we're going to need one more for the ID. So let's put that there and we'll change this to data ID. And then this one here, we want to say data dot underscore ID. And then we want to say dot dollar sign OID. So that's going to give us the object ID that we need. All right. And we can um, now go ahead and add an event handler. So first, let's give this link an ID, all right, and we'll set it to edit. Actually, let's set it to set book. All right, now, oops, get that out of there. Now, uh, this is going to work a little different because of the way that we're adding the job. We're adding the HTML through the JavaScript, so our handler is going to be a little different than what we did here. We're going to start with um, the body element, and then we're going to call on click, and then add the the um, set book ID. All right, let me just show you. So let's go to where this ends. All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to say body dot on click. And then we want to pass in that set book ID. Okay. And then after that, we can run a function. Okay. Let's test it out. Okay. So. If we reload and click, you can see we're getting set book. Now, remember the data attributes that we pass, we should be able to, to access those. So I'm going to test that out. So let's say uh, this 
dot data and we'll pass in oops ID now the way that we're getting this is you can see here we passed in data dash ID well to get it we're going to use the data function and then pass in whatever is after data so just this ID all right so hopefully that will work for us so let's click edit and now you can see when I click it it's gonna give us the ID all right so we can get all of the fields like that so what we want to do is when we get those fields we want to put them inside of the form all right so for instance uh, let's see I'm gonna copy that let's take we know that the the title input we know has an ID of title all right so we'll say title dot val and then we're gonna pass in this dot data title okay so now if I go and reload and I click edit you can see that my book one goes right into the title if I click that my book two all right so we want to do that for all of the fields so we'll copy that okay and then we'll change this to category this one is excerpt Okay, so now if we click one of these, whoops, we get undefined there. Why is that? So we want to look at where we made these data attributes. Let's see, excerpt. Oh, I put expert. Okay, that's not what we want. Change that. And now that should work. All right, there we go. So whatever one we click is going to show up in the form. That's what we want. Now, we need to differentiate the add book from edit book alright so since we're using the same form we need a way to do that and I think what I'm gonna do is when we click edit it's gonna do this okay so what I wanna do is set a session uh, um, session storage value to the current ID alright so to do that uh, we'll go ahead and say session storage dot set item and we want to set current book ID all right and we'll set that to um, this dot data ID okay so we'll have that set when we click edit now when we submit it it's gonna go it's gonna do this okay this is the the ad book submission so what we want to do is after we submit we want to check for that session variable so up here let's say if um, session session storage dot get item current book ID is not equal to null then let's console log um, we'll say we'll just say is ID I don't know it doesn't matter and then right here I'm just gonna return all right, just to stop that from happening. So let's go ahead and let's reload this and just add anything. Okay, we, I clicked add, nothing's, nothing's happening. If I reload and click edit and then click add, you can see we're getting is ID. All right, now this is gonna stay there. For instance, if I reload and then we try it's still going to be there so what we need to do is when the document loads we want to clear that out all right so let's say session storage uh, session storage dot remove item current book ID all right so let's go ahead and save that and reload and now 
if we click add it's it's gone but if we click edit and submit it's there all right so that's exactly what we want so this is actually this is all fine we want this no matter what so let's put that above that okay and we'll get rid of this return so the only thing that we want to change here if there is an ID if we're doing an update is the URL because we need to include that ID so what we can do is in this if statement let's add an else alright so if it is not null meaning that we're, we want to do an add then we want this to be the URL so I'm gonna just cut that out and we're going to create a variable called URL, so I'm going to put that there, and then we're going to set it here. Okay, and then I'm going to copy that whole line, and we're going to put that in our else. Okay, and then the only difference is we want to put our ID, so we want to go, uh, let's see, did I put that in a variable? No, I didn't. Actually, let's just do it right here. Okay, we'll say var id, and we're going to set it to session storage dot get item current book id. All right, and then we just need to squeeze that into the URL. So after this slash books, we want to say slash, and then we want to just concatenate. Uh, the ID all right and then the rest of it is all the same so let's save it let's give it a shot all right so let's see we have my book one let's click edit and then let's change it to my book and then the number one all right and then we'll click add book my book one okay so it just it, it replaced it um, hmm. Let's see. Let's just test this out. So console. Oh, I have these backwards. I have them backwards. <laughs> this this one needs to be down here. And then these, these two need to be up there. All right. So let's go ahead. Let's just delete that one I just added. Which is this one. All right, and then let's try it again. So my book one, we'll say one, and let's change the category to drama. Okay, so we're getting an error here. Let's see. Oh, okay. So it's giving us an error because we're we're doing a post on an update and it's supposed to be put. So that's no problem. We're just going to have to create another variable. So we'll say uh, type and we'll set that to put. And then here we're going to set it to post. Okay. And then down here we'll just replace this with type okay third times the charm and there we go book one okay it changed the number it changed this to drama so we can now add we can read update and we can add books the last thing to do is delete all right and actually, you know what I'm going to do is change this from add book because it doesn't make sense if we're actually doing an edit. So let's go down to, uh, actually it's in our HTML. Let's just change add book. 
Let's just put submit. Nice and neutral. Okay, so delete isn't going to be difficult. We need to create a delete link. So let's go down to where we're generating the HTML. And let's put, we'll put a pipe character and then we'll start our link. All right, so this, let's give it an ID. Okay, we'll give it an ID of um, delete book. Okay, let's see if that shows up. All right. And let me see, let's set an href so that we get the pointer. All right, and now we're also going to want to pass the ID just like we did here. So I'm going to grab this, I mean this. Okay, we'll go and put that here. All right, and then we'll go up and create an event handler for the delete. So that's going to be the same same thing we did here with the body. Copy that and just paste. Whoop, that didn't copy. All right, and now we're going to just change this to delete book. All right, and let's just test it out. All right, we'll make sure that the ID is being passed in. Oops. Okay, click delete, and there we go, we get the ID. All right, now we're gonna wanna make another Ajax request, so I'm gonna just copy what we have here. Okay, and let's put this ID in a variable called ID. Okay, and then we'll paste that in. And for the URL, it's going to be the same one that we had for edit. So this one here, the one that includes the ID. So I'm just going to copy this. And we'll do that. Okay, so that'll stay the same. And then, let's see, we don't need this. And then type, this time is gonna be delete. Okay, so we have type, and we can change this. Let's do async, so it's gonna be asynchronous. So we're gonna say true, and then let's set a timeout of 300,000 okay then we have our success that's fine we just want to redirect console log error that's fine okay and then let's just go right here and return actually no let's not do that this this should work so let's save it okay we'll delete my book one and it's gone Okay, my book two. And if we look in Mongo Lab, you can see that they're gone. All right, so we now have full CRUD functionality in this application. So you can see the Mongo Lab data API is really easy to work with. Uh, I know we hit a couple bumps and it was a little clunky in some areas, but um, I think it's all right. I'm not going to redo the video or anything. Um, so hopefully you guys learned a little something from it. Another tool for your developer toolbox and uh, thanks for watching if you guys like these videos please subscribe please leave a like if you don't like it go ahead and leave a dislike and i will see you next time